Okay. First of all, Johnny, this week in Indianapolis, they've been uh, qualifying at 206, 207 miles an hour. When you were racing back in uh, the late 40s, early 50s, what kind of speeds did it take to win the pole position in the Indy back then? Well, the first time I competed there was in 1949. I had uh, second fast time, and uh, I qualified at 132 miles an hour. But there, I qualified the second day, see? So 10 cars qualified the first day. Consequently, the furthest up front I could start was uh, uh, in 12th position. Okay. Now, back then, did you ever dream that uh, 30 years from then that they would be traveling at speeds of 206, 207 miles an hour? No, certainly not. However, uh, there's a lot of things that's contributing to this due to the fact that the cars only weigh 1,500 pounds and they're independently sprung, the motor's in the back, and uh, the fuel is on the left side. Consequently, uh, when it accelerates, the car by being independently sprung gets a terrific bite plus the fact that the tires are 16 inches wide in the front in the back and about 12 inches wide in the front so all in all what with the lighter metals and uh, uh, stainless steel and such as that magnesium uh, it figures that uh, it would come about okay let's stay with the speed just for a minute do you see let's say 10 years down the road do you see the speeds continuing to increase or do you think somewhere along the line they're going to have to put some kind of restrictions on top speed well there there are restrictions now they see the american ingenuity uh, <laughs> will make the car go faster because they they concentrate more on it they make the cars lighter more durable more maneuverable consequently they handle better and they develop more power great uh, factor towards uh, developing more power is a turbocharger see because they're only 162 uh, 61 inches uh, but they're turbocharged. Consequently, the fuel is driven in there, and it's very efficient. Also, you started out, I believe, as a midget racer yourself. How tough is it to make that transition from midget racing, to, say, to Indy racing? Well, in my day, we used to uh, make a living driving a race car, and I would run a midget seven nights a week, eight months a year. And uh, then on Sundays or Saturday afternoons, we'd run uh, the county fairs, and then Sundays, we'd run the state fairs. At that time, they had a series of 12 national championship events, one and the same of an Indianapolis car. See, in, in those days, you had to run the same car on the dirt mile tracks as competed in Indianapolis, but that no longer exists. Consequently, we got a lot of exposure, and you could get real sharp driving a midget se uh, seven nights a week, and then the big car on Sundays and Saturdays on the half mile and the mile tracks. So we got a tremendous amount of exposure and. Uh, it was a livelihood, so uh, it behooved one to get sharp, you know. Okay, it doesn't seem like there's that much midget racing going on now. Is it tougher for someone that would want to get into indie racing uh, nowadays because there isn't as much midget racing around? Well, that, that's true to a certain extent. However, uh, the field at Indianapolis, the, the newer drivers, will say of the last 12 to 14 years, <clears throat> more or less graduated from stock cars and or rear engine group seven cars with the wings on them that compete on road race courses say like jack brabham was the first man to bring a rear engine car uh, to indianapolis and it had an extremely small engine but it had independent suspension consequently he could get through the turns faster and that raised the speed see so uh, no longer does uh, basically do uh, do the drivers graduate from the midget ranks into uh, indianapolis competition also, your son followed in your footsteps. How did you feel about that? Did you encourage him? Did you try to discourage him? What were your feelings? Well, I have mixed emotions about my son driving a race car, and naturally you can understand because you can stub a toe doing that. But uh, I tried to discourage it for several years, but uh, I saw he was determined to do it. So then I told him a lot of stories and facts and tried to help him uh, get a ride in a, in a three-quarter midget when he started and then he went on into stock cars and then into uh, sprint cars on half mile dirt tracks at the various fairgrounds and or like at Ascot or the fairgrounds right out here in El Centro. But uh, he's competed now I think in uh, seven different uh, Indianapolis races and his best finish uh, at Indy was with George Bignotti in 19, I think 73, he finished fifth. And he's back there now uh, practicing and uh, trying to get around there fast.